Hello, my name is Marit Guttormsen and I work for Statoil. Today I will be presenting the Baron C case study, an integrated depth velocity model building flow. I will first talk about the Snövit Albatross field and their motivation for acquiring a 3D ocean bottom seismic. Then I will show you some results, but the main focus is on the integrated velocity model building flow. And then I will wrap up with some conclusions. The Snövit Albatross field is located north of Norway. It is a gas and condensate field and the water depth is around 300 meters and the reservoir depth is around 2000 meters. The 3D OBS was acquired based on a 2D feasibility test in 2006. The image to the right shows the PS data, which has successfully imaged below a gas cloud. On the left, we see the legacy streamer data and the bright energy in the shallow marks the gas outline and at the right hand side we can see that the PP quality is sufficient. First I will show you the result in the north. Here we can see that the PP data is improved compared to the legacy streamer data, but the PS data is superior. In the south, the OBS PP data did not provide an uplift compared to the legacy streamer data, but the PS data has clear uh, structures below the gas. For this project, we had several data sets available. First of all, we had the vintage streamer data that provided regional control and shallow coverage. And then we had the new 3D OBS, which we used for a structural image below the gas and we had long offsets and we had better low frequencies. And in addition, it's possible to use the downgoing data for shallow coverage. We also had two key wells just outside the gas area. For the PP, what do we need to solve and how? First of all, we need to solve the vertical P velocity and the horizontal velocity components epsilon and delta. The main tool is tomography, where we use reflection gather flatness and well constraints and we also use full waveform inversion that can provide a high resolution VP using long offset data. For PS, which is a combination of pressure energy going down and shear energy coming up, we need the same parameters as for PP but in addition we need a shear velocity. We assume that the horizontal components of the velocities are the same. An important factor is the shear wave statics. This is a statics that can replace shallow VS high frequency variations. And then the main tool to solve the shear velocity is event correlation. And we also used interpolation from good areas to poor areas. Then I will talk a bit more in detail about the shear wave statics. On the left hand side, we see PP and PS non migrated near offset receiver stacks. On the PP data, we see the water bottom followed by a thin and variable shallow layer. The thickness is between 20 and 50 meters. Moving to the PS data, we observe a large time delay before the corresponding event appears. The corresponding events were mapped on PP and PS and the VPVS ratio extracted by isolating the travel times. On the right hand side, we see the lateral variation in the VPVS ratio. We observe the following. VPVS ratio is high. It varies both in a regional sense and between adjacent receivers. From the PP, we know that this layer is relatively thin, 20 to 50 meters. And when we analyze the next layer, we see that we have a VPVS ratio of close to 2. This anomalous layer could not be built into the velocity model, neither the resolution needed in thickness or the slow velocities. We also know that the energy will travel very close to vertical, and it is therefore better to remove these variations using a static shift. The static shift applied is such that the velocity model would be smooth all the way up to the seafloor. The next slide shows a migrated QC of this process. This slide shows the motivation for doing the shear wave statics. The only difference between the images is the application of the shear statics. 
On the right hand side, we clearly see more continuous and more geological consistent events. Then we move to the event correlation that is used to extract the S velocity. Here we can see that on the sides we can interpret both on the PP and PS. In the middle we need to interpolate from the good areas to the bad areas, but there are some reflectivity in the PP that helps constrain the model. It's also important to note that you can either use the VPVS ratio to keep the same gradient and complexity in VS as in VP, or you can solve for the VS directly. We assume that the VS would be stable across the gas cloud, but the VPVS ratios should have an imprint of the gas. Then we found that the PS gather flatness were useful for the VP velocity model update. And I will now show you how that is done. First of all, we started with the PP data. And we have an interpretation that is shown on the right hand side that does not match the geology at all. When we got the PS data, we could see that the events were really much shallower than we first thought. Then we use this framework together with the PS gathers on the left hand side to run the tomography and on the right hand side it is the original result that was driven by the PP gather flatness and the PP interpretations. And we clearly see that the framework is important in the velocity model building update. Then another thing with the PS gathers is that they are sensitive to the difference between epsilon and delta. We have chosen to trust the delta from the well ties and feed the update into the epsilon. Here we can clearly see on the right hand side how the update flattened the gather bet better. This can then again be used in the full waveform inversion. So here is an example of the full waveform inversion, which we could see gave us a better definition of the gas, but we also observed that we always had to run a tomography to flatten the gathers and to get the velti after the update. Now I will run through the whole flow as a summary. A reference model should be built based on the regional control. Then integrating the PS to get the framework and the VS velocity should come next. Then the PS gather flatness together with well information can be used in particular to derive epsilon and vertical P velocity. And a sensitivity study prior to commencing tomography is advised. In our work, we spent a lot of effort refining the P model before utilizing the PS data. In retrospect, we would have spent more time on the PS upfront. The last step of the process is to refine the model by including full waveform inversion with the best possible starting model. We saw little improvement in image quality but changes in depth away from the well that could be important in field development. And we found that the full waveform inversion needed to be followed by a tomography. As a conclusion, we see that we have an improved structural image below the shallow gas using the PS data. In addition, we have updated all the velocity parameters and we have used in particular the PS and also the PP long offsets to achieve that. What we will highlight is that adding velocity model building flow should be tailored to the geological challenges, the data quality and the available technology. With this, I would thank you for following this e-lecture and acknowledge the Snövit Albatros license, my Statoil colleagues and also the CGG Oslo Center for processing the data.